Yeah. Yeah. So Lee doesn't realize you're bigger than him. <laughs> <laughs> What is it? It's not the size of the dog in the fight, it's the size of the fight in the dog. Yeah. yeah. He's not. 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 He's Present. Thank you. Please you stand with me for the invocation. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening as we always ask for the advice and leadership that you give us and the direction for our community. We know all things go through you and you make all things possible. We uh, thank you for blessing our young athletes as they represented our community this weekend throughout the state. They always make us proud, and you make that possible. Be with us as we move forward. Be with our law enforcement. Be with our country with the election coming up next week. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Again, it was uh, nice that our cross country team state championship for St. John's, uh, their mm -hmm. best finish from the boy is like our community is just, we, our youth get to experience so much success. And, uh, and I think that becomes from the leadership of our their parents, from our great community. And it's just uh, always nice to be able to go somewhere and represent Boy, Kansas, and, and uh, talk about not only our community, but our youth. And uh, I think we're very fortunate. So just uh, throw that out there. Lloyd, you have anything? I um, only had one thing I was going to ask. Do we have an update on four, how the 14 project and when that's going to get finished? Yeah, actually, yep. Yeah. Uh, I do have that some. rain on your parade. That's no, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, they, uh, as I said last meeting, they had to do the five layer graph on the road. We did get those results today. There are some high spots they're going to have to grind, uh, grind down. Uh, there's a little bit of just tension between, I think, KDOT and, and the contractor, so we're kind of caught in the middle, unfortunately, and they had a few working days left. Um, and so they're still within that contract, uh, working days. Uh, however, tomorrow, we're, we have been working hard to try to speed it up. The road's virtually done. We're just trying to get past it. So tomorrow, we're meeting on site uh, with KDOT and the contractor and the engineers kind of do a preliminary punch list so that way at least they can kind of get everything punched out while they wait to get the road ground down. Um, so I don't have an answer for as soon, how soon they're going to do it. I'll have more information, Lloyd, and I can maybe shoot that out to everybody that they have a firmer date. You know, to me it was going to be this week or, or sorry, the very first part of the next week was what I've been told, but I hope I'll be able to firm that up. But that's the story of what's going on. But yeah, an encouraging developments today at least. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. <coughs> I had an, uh, I had a uh, resident approach me about the intersection of Mill and Second over here, and uh, they made the comment they had been about been in two wrecks there at that intersection. That because there's cars parked on each side of that intersection, it's tough to see around and and catch the traffic going north and south. And uh, just, they didn't know if there's anything we can do there. I mean, it's kind of the nature of how it's set up, but he said, he said this time he, he got right out there and just about got broadsided. So wanted me to bring it up, so. Okay. Thank you. Butch. Yes. Um, <clears throat> last night we had uh, trucker, no, trunk or treat at, uh, <laughs> I don't remember what we called it, <laughs> at, um, at Zion Lutheran Church at Luther Park, um, I would say probably about 200 people were there. Children went through. A lot of a lot of adults opened their trunks up and passed out candy. And I would like to give a big thanks to Chief 
and your people for being there. They brought their little uh, uh, um, golf cart, <laughs> if you would, so. and passed out bags of candy and goodies to the kids. And I thought it was a darn nice show for the city of Beloit to do that. Thank you, Chief. No Thank problem. You. Thanks. Anybody else? No. Thank you. Tony? Uh, yeah, the uh, landing gear of the Dairy Queen approached me. Uh, apparently a customer came in and she said, had a scare with a kid trying to cross the highway out there to get either the Dairy Queen or the Sonic or whatever. And, uh, wondering, is there anything for a crosswalk, a uh, walk light that we can deal with that? I mean, for it is 45, and I mean, just if you just put a crosswalk up there, and no way of actually slowing down traffic here, it's not going to do a whole heck of a lot sure, of that's good. Some way to have to work with KDOT, yeah. and that's a KPOT thing, I'm sure. You know, so it's something we can look into. You know, and see. Well, of course, I know that. You know, there, there's a few areas it seems like when we go around that outside that maybe things need to be slowed down up there on uh, uh, Eighth Street where that enters on, you know, sometimes that just seems like that's a begging for a stoplight there to slow everything down. We've had fatalities there and uh, there and then up there to slow that traffic. The Pizza Hut corner, 8th Street, I mean, it's just so wonderful. Yeah. It's the hazards of what we get to deal with, I guess. Yeah, and then, you know, with our Casey's out there, that's kind of become a traffic hazard there, you know, unintentional, but with, you know, people trying to get on from there and get off of, off of the point four into that business, it's making it kind of an unsafe spot people aren't paying attention so but uh, there's it's probably something we can ask about and uh, it's that or you incorporate you know into a future if you ever had trails you know because the wellness center's across there I mean there's a couple of things across yeah. there how do you get safely across that that would have been my question is that that trail that goes at out. what point do you put a crossing of the yeah so maybe you put it towards kind of the tech or over on walnut street or yeah, yeah, you tee it off anywhere because then you can almost have like a trail frontage up along there too. You know, again, this is we're a half a block away from that roadside park with the existing trail. And there wouldn't be too much to connect to. The sure, to get it across. Roadside park. Yeah, I'll make a note and I'll just at least plant the bug in stores here. I don't know the process with K dot to do that stuff. Yeah, I hope you have a little different than yeah, <laughs> different than all night. I'll, I'll be tired. <laughs> across the kind of like the railroad in there across. You'll have them someday. But, uh, anyway. That's not our fault either. But, uh, anyway, Andrew. Not that. Okay. Katie, do you have anything at this point? Nothing tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Jason? Um, yeah, you did see a little picture there that was from the Halloween thing that was passing around. Uh, people took some pictures of it. I was on Facebook. and That was a, it's a pretty cool non-taxpayer funded uh, vehicle that can be used that's a uh, good showpiece for the police department um otherwise yeah the, the k-14 um is going on the uh um uh, we did meet on the heel council so there'll be more coming on that here down the line um thank you. Um, the Merle farm lake should be coming back to you guys in the next council meeting uh, now with Heather to talk about the North Campus, so that should be more coming. We're all kind of process, that's why hopefully this meeting is a little shorter tonight. I did talk to John Brummer uh, today, and the some of you got to see the water plant. The clarifier is giving them the consistent product now, so they're happy with that. Uh, the filter, the filtration kind of in the middle, that big that middle piece, that's the super filter, whatever you called it, is doing what it needs to do now. So they're going to start working on the, the RO or reverse osmosis now, kind of getting that up to speed and, and spitting out the right kind of product. See if it's working on the bromides and all that kind of stuff. So really, he said no surprises so far beyond just normal normal little things. So, uh, all positive on that end. Um, uh, uh, went to KMEA, my first KMEA board meeting last week, so that was interesting. And then um, going to their little conference this, this uh, in plat latter part of this weekend. Um, uh, otherwise, the LMC um, thing at the kettle was well attended. There was probably 60 plus people there. Um, so um, that was good to see. Uh, I'm trying to think. Otherwise, that's about it right now. Unless there's other questions, um, I do have a report I'm preparing. I just I don't have it in the pack packet this time. Hopefully, you'll see that going forward. At least you'll have a little bit more condensed version to kind of see how we're doing and how they're aging and how we're getting them completed for you. But um, I'll, I'll be there next time. Anything else? Okay. Thank you. Next item on the agenda this evening is 
the consent agenda from October the 18th and appropriations 11A. So I move the move by Councilman Graybone that we approve the consent agenda and appropriations 11A. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Ponto. Any further discussion? Mandy, would you take a roll call vote, please? McMillan? Yes. Gingler? Yes. Audie? Yes. Graybon? Yes. Luttrell? Yes. Ponto? Yes. Thank you. Next item on the seating on the agenda this evening is ordinance 2194, the uh, solid waste. This is just what you had last time. I just uh, made some clarifications to section 17504. Yeah. I guess my only question there was um, is if you're getting your trash picked up on a Tuesday, is it going to continue to be a Tuesday, or is that something that's going to change when we get a new? Yeah, so I, I did talk with Jamie. He has feedback from the ordinance that he has requested. And his plan is to do exactly the same schedule since he doesn't want to change it on people again. Uh, he said that Wednesday is going to be a little tight for him, but he's going to. He thinks he can do it. So um, he, he just said probably the first you know couple of weeks that they might miss a few, but he's going to work really hard to make sure people know his number. We're going to do some. Um, Things so people can know what his number is to contact him because he said he'd be right there to pick it up if it was missed. So, um, yeah, so I, uh, to answer your question, Andrew, it should be the same. Okay. Uh, I don't know, I don't know what to hinder him or anything, but I mean, what if Topeka slash the county raises the landfill fees on him? Yeah. I mean, he's so, trying to bid it as, as close to where he's not profiting from landfill fees as you can possibly do this job here about going yeah so I mean what if they double it on him and then then what do we do or, yeah so that'll be addressed in the contract so that's we're working on that part now okay. um, and in the contract it'll be kind of like Mitchell County's contract where they had concessions for you know the landfill fee you can you can do a request or a, an appropriate raising to, to, to compensate for that um, uh, so so there'll be some of that Katie's working on it now so hopefully the next meeting we'll have that piece now we've got the ordinance pretty well squared away so um yeah okay so we're in. yep this will, will we see this again then when the contract come? the ordinance it's itself the, um, no not the ordinance but the contract issue again oh <laughs> i mean after the contracts will we see the issue will we see the contract and have to vote on that too once it's complete Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. You'll have a resolution approving the yeah. contract. Yeah. yeah. This is just a waste, all waste ordinance, and basically just you know figured since we're kind of changing things a little bit, we should probably address that, and make sure it was accurate and what we wanted, and and obviously it it, it deals with more than just the residential pickup, you know. So yeah, that's why it seems like you're seeing a lot. <laughs> yeah, we felt like we, we really should, didn't have a contract. Before, felt like we should so. talk about trash at every meeting, you know. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we got a lot of crack crack <laughs> talking from Butch. Yeah. It's piling. It's piling up. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I resemble that. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve ordinance 2194. Have a second. I'll second. It's been moved by Councilman Audie that we approve ordinance 2194 solid waste, and a second by Councilman Latrell. Is there any more further discussion? No further discussion, Mandy. Would you please take a roll call vote? Gingler? Yes. Graybon? Yes. Ponto? Yes. Latrell? Yes. McMillan? Yes. Audi? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda this evening is Ordinance 2195 uh, for the uh, compensation of the city attorney. Any questions for staff? Mr. Mayor, I approve ordinance 2195. Motion has been made by Councilman Audi to approve ordinance 2195. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Graybaum. Any further discussion? No further discussion. Mandy, would you take another roll call vote, please? Luttrell? Uh, yes. Ponto? Yes. Gingler? Yes. Graybaum? Yes. Audi? Yes. McMillan? Yes. Thank you. Ordinance passed. Next item on the agenda this evening is the KMEA Board of Directors appointment. Any 
and it's uh, recommended that we appoint Administrator Ravy as uh, Director 1, Voting Delegate and Electric Operations, Ronnie Sporleader as Director Number 2, Foreman, Manny Milvers as Alternate Voting Delegate and the KMEA Board of Directors. Do I have a motion to move? moved by Councilman McMillan that we approve the aforementioned uh, to be on the Board of Directors of the KMEA. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Gaylor. Any further discussion? No further discussion. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Sorry, on my sheet, old habits die hard. I put mayor here instead of the city administrator, so I'll call that. He's <laughs> also the director of city. Yeah, that part I don't know. <laughs> Just, just, just ignore that. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> you saw that. Yeah, all pays good. <laughs> Next item on the agenda is the KMEA self capacity to need. Uh, is there uh, questions for staff on this? I do have a question. Yes, sir. Okay. This is a sale of capacity, not a sale of energy. It would be whatever it was before. Uh, so the actual vernacular, that part I do not know. Um, GRD. Pardon me? It's on the name of GRD. It's, it, it's a piece of the GRDA contract as well. Well, there's a difference between capacity and, I mean, because on the front page of the agenda, it's called the capacity sale. And then the, it says in the notice it's called the energy contract. <coughs> Isn't it capacity, Ronnie? It, it's uh, one meg of GRD energy. Actually, it's energy. Oh. So it's two. No, no it's it's two, two for June through August and one uh, uh, for all the other months. Yeah, so it's basically, uh, that part I don't know, Lloyd, so I'm sorry, but, but it's basically what we're doing currently, we're doing it for a one year, uh, at this point with the city of Meade is negotiated. And, and regardless of this contract, we still will own the capacity. Right. We're just selling it to Correct. Them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's almost like we're subleasing it to them. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, I guess um, my question is, we used to sell it at 35. Correct. Meade wants to sell it at 30. And then you say, I would prefer a higher price for a period of only one year after discussion. So I guess Sure. What price are we actually? Oh, are we getting it for thirty-two fifty. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where, where are we going? Um, so this is kind of all just the last week and a half here, and so I did talk to um, uh, Dean Cordes over at Mead um, Monday morning, and um, they were yeah wanting the thirty for two years. I in talking with Scott, just thinking about myself, I wasn't real excited about going for a two-year period just with the unknowns of what the energy markets are going to do. And right now, it's a, it, like we showed last last time, it's, it's a good, it's worked out well for us. Um, so yeah, here's one, and you can know, pass it on. Um, I guess here's kind of the, listen, I kind of get you more familiar, I just kind of made that up, but, um, or put that together. So I did talk with him, and, and, and he was fine to go to one, and, and KMEA is, there are people, obviously, they kind of work for both sides of us. So they're the ones that kind of threw out the $30 number based on the market, what other opportunities there were. And so um, uh, the, uh, um, so I'm talking with him, he, he was interested in doing one year at 30. So what I did, is this, the sheet you have passed around here, um, this is kind of looking at that, uh, kind of like I showed you last time how the PCA has helped, has kind of notched down since we've been able to play in the market here the last nine, 10 months. Uh, this is what it would do at 30 or 32, okay? So we're still going to come out ahead based on what the market's doing, but also, you know, with only one or two um, uh, megawatts uh, of uh, capacity, uh, being sold or energy, whatever, it, it, it uh, doesn't leave us really exposed. We still have enough resources that we can, we can, we can, we can make it, but, you know, for, for one year is all I really wanted to expose us to, and I kind of put 30 or 32 because, in case you guys said no, we absolutely have to have 32 and I had to go back to them. But I kind of want to gauge what you guys are feeling because I have to, uh, their, their, their council meeting is November 14th and obviously the contract is ending December 31st. So we kind of want to get it squared away. And it has been a good a good thing for us um, so far. So um, yeah. so I, I would entertain any questions. I can explain it further. I would have to keep anything so I understand. What, we're, we're
we're, we're at about 75% of our um, power is coming from this GRDA contract, which is like I talked to you last time. It's like the bond part of your portfolio is really safe, but it's also it's expensive. Um, at, the, at the EMP2 meeting that I was at, uh, probably the 13 communities, we were there's only like one other, I think it was over 50%. So this helps us kind of get down to that, so we kind of a little bit more diverse and, and, and hopefully able to, to deliver a little bit cheaper product uh, to our, our, our customers. But boy. What is a total capacity that we'll, we have right now? Do we have contracted? With, well, even our, including our own. What, what is power? Sure. Well, I mean, through through KMEA is that seven point three nine. I mean, our load has gone up to thirteen. Yeah, and, and megawatts, and I wonder what our total capacity is. Uh, your generation is uh, set at twenty, but what I understand, they don't like to go much over eighteen because the units are very old. Yep. Yeah. But we have other contracts too. All right. Oh. You know, a total capacity is. Well, that's capacity. that's what that one is right there. So yeah, the uh, the like second piece right here, Lloyd. All of our contracts is uh, the 7.749 is what we have contracts, and so then beyond that, we'd have to go in the spot market, you know, to, to so cover that. So the 7.349 plus the 18 <coughs> plus the plan. Product. What the plan allows us—I mean, you know, Lloyd, but what the plan allows us to do is be able to play in the market. We have to have that capacity, even if we only run it for <laughs> whatever the minimum is to show that they can run. It allows us to then go play in that spot market, which would be good with that PCA. So that's what kind of offloading some of that. Um, this to me at a loss, we can turn around and still make it up in the market itself. So that's kind of what we've been doing for the last nine, ten months so far. So, because uh, this is a, this is we can hope it's a five. This GRDA portion that we're offloading one to two based on time of year, uh, we have to take at least seventy five percent of that, no matter what. So there's not a lot of you know it's not like you just, just can't take and go play in the market. We got to pay for seventy five percent of that five. Um, get my words mixed up, megawatts, uh, no matter what. So, so, so between us and me, it's kind of a win win. Yeah, exactly. They kind of get a little bit bigger piece of area, a nice fixed band of power, and we get to be a little bit more diverse and, and take advantage of it in the market at this point. So, the $44,000 difference between 35 and 30, they're saying that actually is a legitimate based on market conditions. Yeah, so this is his spreadsheet of what he actually did. He went and plugged in 32 and 30 and what that would do for us over that run. And, and we're still positive, you know, six figures. <laughs> better than but market. based on the market, the 30 is a is a good number. So 35 based on today's market would not be something you could achieve, most likely. Well, you mean as far as selling for, yeah, the market is a market. And basically, the, the problem is uh, the KMEA organization, that, that person that's kind of in charge of helping with this, he's kind of, you know, trying to put the, the leverage or put, put a little pressure on us, even, you know, kind of, sh I think, trying to show that he's doing a good job for me, too. And so he kind of spit that in his email to me, I think, uh, <laughs> right here, that, you know, he kind of put out there that um, um, an outside offer might be $20 a megawatt hour or 25 a megawatt hour for two years or, or five years. So he kind of threw that out there at the end, acting like, you know, this is something that they might be able to get somewhere else even cheaper. So. What are we giving for? What are we paying for this GRDA? Yes, yeah, um, per megawatt. Oh hours. man, I know it. It's, it's going to be real approximate, like forty-five ish is what I think is what it's running us. <laughs> <right. 45 laughs> so so, so we're losing fifteen. Yeah, is that? But we can buy it on the market for like fifteen or something like that to replace it. So I, the, Scott has the numbers and they work. I couldn't tell you that. I don't think yet. Any, any more questions for Jason? Any more questions? Entertain a motion to approve the KMAA cell, capa uh, cell capacity to move. So moved. And moved by Councilman Adi that we approve the cell capacity to me. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Councilman McMillan. Any further discussion? So are we approving two years or one year? One year. One year. One year. Yeah, one year. One year. Yeah. One year. In, as far as the dollar amount, as much as I can, basically. Twenty or twenty. Yeah. Are you going to shoot for thirty-two? So thirty-two is what I'm going to say. I'm going to say that's what I got pressure to ask for. Yeah, so. yeah, that's what I. 
Yeah, it's hard to fit you. Yeah, the one year is like the most important. Yeah. That was the <laughs> Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say aye. 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 Next item on the agenda this evening is the uh, generator bid from Cummins Central Power in the amount of $17,535. <coughs> Any questions for staff? How many more generators are, are we looking for? Yeah. Uh, I talked to Adam Moser, the foreman, and we're thinking there's three critical throughout the system. We have 10 lift stations right now, but there's three critical, with this one being the most critical because it's a smaller and it's bound to, during a power outage, it'd be bound to back up the quickest. Okay, and uh, I mean, it looks like you're wanting to make this stationary, I guess, but yes. on site, not, right. not it, portable. It, it would be a stationary unit. We'll still maintain our portable unit to service so the other lift stations. Areas. And, uh, but we're, we're getting enough uh, lift stations now to where if we have, due to extreme weather event, if we have power outage, we're not going to be able to get to them all. And we're going to definitely run into a problem of backup to residents. So there's three other stations that are critical. Did we even entertain the possibility of seeing what they'd shoot us a price to buy two or more? No, uh, I chose to go with just the one at now to see if we're getting everything that we need out of it before we bid out other ones. That I'm straight on what we wanted, that we have everything that we need for it to work for that size lift station and everything. Or if say, oh, okay, well, we should have gone with this other additional piece of equipment or something like that. This is a kind of our, uh, I believe I got everything on it, but it's kind of our uh, trial phase generator. When this happens, how long does it take you to mobilize and how much time do you have before you start having issues? Uh, depends on the lift station. With uh, number one, it's a matter of maybe half hour. And uh, as, as I mentioned, it's one of the smaller lift stations with less holding capacity. And then uh, by the time we hit all the different lift stations around town, it just, we're going to run into, we haven't run into it yet, so don't misunderstand me there, but eventually we're going to run into a problem of if we can't get to them in time, then there are going to be issues and basically we're going to head off those issues. Sounds like it's a good idea. So basically if this works out the way you're hoping it is, we'll probably see a resolution you know, coming back for more? Yeah, okay. yeah, probably probably not until next year. Okay. But uh, now the other ones will be sized a little bit larger due to the lift station capacities. Okay, so move. moved by Councilman Grayvon that we approve the lift station generator bid in the amount of $17,535. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Ponto. Any further discussion? No further discussion. Those in favor, say aye. Aye. Abstain. Motion carried. Next item on the agenda is the transformer bid from Chris Davis in the amount of $46,347. Any questions for staff? There's no questions on your table. Motion to approve the transformer bid. So moved. Then moved by Councilman McMillan that we approve the transformer bid for the amount of $46,347. Do I have a second? Second, second by Councilman Latrell. Any further discussion? Actually, I do have one quick question. It talks about easing outages on Circuit 13 during inclement weather. Where does Circuit 13 encompass? Like, what's that area? Just okay, uh, where David Culler is. Mm -hmm. You go across the river in CPS, uh, you have the sewer plant, and it goes all the way out to uh, Kurt uh, Farwell's and back to the systems operation shop along the highway. It's on, 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 on the highway, and it takes uh, sign slope, circle drive. Uh, 
So this is the circuit that we, the outages we were seeing this past yeah, was all yeah. this circuit basically. Right, okay. basically that's where most of them are at. Uh, most of the problems were up around the cemetery and the old landfill. Um, but we're such a big circuit, uh, you take a lightning hit there, it just puts it all out. So okay. if we get another circuit out there and it works like it should, uh, if you get hit the same way uh, like that, it'll kick still circuit 13 off, but most of the circuit will hope it'll be on circuit 12. Thank you. And it'll also give you more growth. Cool. Okay. Any further discussion? Those in favor, see the public saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda this 